Boys and girls, today we're going to learn about figurative language. Figurative language is a tool that authors use to help us visualize what we're reading. It helps us think about it and, and put pictures to what they're actually saying. Most of the time, the figurative language that is used, it doesn't actually mean exactly what it's saying, but it's just put in there just to maybe bring out emotions or maybe just to help you see and understand what you're reading. There are different types of figurative language. The first type that we're going to talk about is simile. And in a simile, you use the words like or as. For example, as big as a house. The balloon was as big as a house. Well, the balloon probably wasn't as big as a house, but it helps you get this mental image of a very, very big balloon. As quiet as a mouse. In your mind, you can just imagine this person who is like super quiet, just like a mouse scampering across the floor. You can barely hear them, and it gives you that mental image. Similes use like or as. Metaphors are a little bit different because they don't use the word like or as. They just actually say that's what the person is or that's what the thing is. This example here is, you must be a walking encyclopedia to know all of those facts. Well, highly unlikely that that's a walking encyclopedia. And if you don't know what an encyclopedia is, that's a book with a bunch, a bunch of information. But when you say a person is a walking encyclopedia, in your mind, you can imagine this person that just pretty much knows everything. It's a walking encyclopedia. You might say, my dad's a bear in the morning when he gets up. Your dad's not a bear in the morning, but you're trying to convey the idea that in the morning, maybe before he gets coffee, he's you don't want to go messing with him. It'd be like going and messing with a sleeping bear. You don't want to do that. You, your dad needs to get his coffee before he wakes up. So you just you get this mental image of this person that you're just like, I'm going to leave him alone until he gets his coffee. An idiom is an expression that means something different from the meaning of its individual words. Here, I put some over here. Here's some examples of idioms. The first one, beat around the bush. We're not beating around any bush. But what that means is you don't really come right to the point. You kind of go around the what you're trying to explain without really saying what you're supposed to say. You know, when you get in trouble and your mom says, why did you do that? You might beat around the bush and say, well, um, mom, well, you know, I was just, you know, it, it, you know, I was kind of tired today. And you're not really getting to the point why you did it. You're beating around the bush. The second one, biting off more than you can chew. Doesn't mean you're actually biting something off. It means taking on too much work. Try committing to doing more than you can really do. The next one is by the skin of your teeth, which the words, if you just read the words by the skin of your teeth, you don't have skin on your teeth. So it doesn't make any sense, but it's an idiom. It means you just barely made it by the skin of your teeth. You just barely made it. The next one, doing something at the drop of a hat. That means you're ready to do something whenever it comes up. It's like you don't need a lot of time to plan or anything. You just get up and do it right at the drop of a hat. Hats aren't really dropping, but it's an idiom. It's just a way that authors put in interesting um, sayings to make you more interested in what they're writing. It's, it's kind of fun. Um, the last one that I typed here, there's so many idioms, but the last one I typed here says, counting, don't count your chickens before they hatch, which actually means don't count on something happening until after it's already happened. Um, you're not really counting chickens, but it's just a saying to help us kind of visualize, kind of gives it makes it a little bit more interesting. And that's a tool that authors use. Another tool that authors use is onomatopoeia. And in the story that we read yesterday, Stink and the Freaky Frog Freak Out, there was a lot of onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia is just words that represent so sounds. There's some um, examples right there. It's like honk, beep, vroom, 
clang, zap, boing, boom, crash, whack, thump, bang. Those are just words that represent sounds. And when we were reading them yesterday, Mrs. Tiffin was having a little bit of trouble reading those words because they were the sounds of frogs, and I don't know how to say frog words, but those are just examples of some onomatopoeia. And the author puts that in there so you can kind of, in your mind, you can hear those sounds of those frogs. The last figurative language that we're going to talk about is hyperbole. And a hyperbole is just an exaggeration that makes, makes things sound bigger, better, or more than what they truly are. For example, this boy is saying, I waited for a hundred years. Well, that boy didn't wait for a hundred years. But in your mind, you can visualize this person who thinks that he had to wait forever for something to happen. Man, it, it seems to be a hundred years before my birthday comes. It's not a hundred years. I have a birthday every single year. But in my mind, it just seems like it's so long from one birthday to the next. Or maybe I might say California is a million miles away because that's where my son lives. He's, he lives in California and I never get to see him. So it just feels like he's a million miles away. He's not really a million miles away, but it feels that way. And that's an example of a hyperbole. So today we learned about figurative language. Authors use this kind of language to help us understand the story and visualize it, to elicit emotions, to make us interested in their reading. The different types of figurative language we talked about were similes. Remember, that uses the word like or as. Metaphors. You actually say that, that, that somebody is something that they're really not, like your dad's not really a bear, and somebody's not really a walking encyclopedia, but we say that they are. Or idioms. Idioms are just sayings that we use all the time that don't really mean exactly what they, you, you're saying, but people understand what, you, what they mean because it's just something that we use all the time. Hyperbole is an exaggeration, and that just means that you're really, really trying to get your point across, and you're exaggerating. Um, in onomatopoeia, that's the sound that sounds. It's words that represent sounds. So those are different types of figurative language.